And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my face when I watched the Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruse fight. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome oh. back to, uh, I think, maybe the third or fourth episode, I can't remember, uh, of the Underground Podcast by myself this time. I've been abandoned by my two boys somehow, Zach and Howard, they don't want to film. So we'll carry this on solo. We're going to be talking today about the Anthony Joshua uh, shenanigans and the fight obviously with Andy Ruiz on the weekend on Saturday night, Sunday morning even. Um, there's a lot to go through, so hit that subscribe button, like this video, turn on our post notifications, uh, and let me know in the comments down below what more you want me to discuss on the podcast. All right, let me slip. First things first, before the fight, before we go into the actual fighting and how they fought and whatnot, and him getting not, and him getting well, TKO'd. Um, before the fight, there was a delay. If people noticed the ring walkout. There was an actual delay of the ring walkout, and people were saying. He, uh, Anthony Joshua, the excuse they gave was he was changing his groin guard, like the thing you put around your waist um, and your groin, obviously. Uh, but that was an excuse by probably his managers, the promoters. But what actually happened was he was having a panic attack in the changing room moments before. And now I hear this side of the story, it makes more sense. And what I respect about Josh, Anthony Joshua is that he didn't, like, he just made a video I just watched now. Uh, today is currently Wednesday on his YouTube channel when he was saying that. I didn't have anxiety. I didn't have. Um, I didn't have a panic attack, and he was denying all of us. And he, he could have easily said, made excuses, but he was like, "It's no excuses. The better man won." And to be honest, it, he did. Andy Ruiz, Mexican fighter, the size of him, the big guy, uh, holds a lot of weight behind him, and you know he came through. Sorry, you're gonna be noticing me sipping tea a lot in this video. This is very hot, by the way, as well. But like when even walking in, you could tell there wasn't something right about. Uh, Joshua, Anthony Joshua, there wasn't something right, he seemed ill, and he was, they found out, I've read some articles, he was ill, and I watched some podcasts too, he was actually ill that whole day, and before the fight, he had the anxiety, because, you people are not going to believe this, but, Anthony Joshua, hear it from me first, got knocked out in sparring, um, a moments before, like a few, few days, a couple days before the actual fight, and that can bring a man down, and it was by the name of, a guy on here, by a European champion, Caballel, all right, Cap whoever Caballel is, um, European champion, got like prior to the fight a few days before. If you get knocked out, that is going to lose your confidence. Apparently, he wasn't well enough to recover from him being conscious. Like his, uh, sorry, the concussion. He he didn't he wasn't able to recover from that because it's moments before you would, you obviously when you need time to recover, and that probably I mean. First of all, I'm not no boxing ex ex expert, I'm just a kid, 18 year old kid in my views, but from watching boxing most of my childhood, like, it can bring a man down, especially if you get beforehand, especially with confidence. Like, everyone, while I was watching this, I was so shocked. Like, even the first couple of rounds, I was thinking, oh, I mean, like, he's handled himself well, Joshua, but he wasn't, he wasn't right. If you notice a lot, he wasn't, when he was actually going to the fight now, he wasn't protecting... Um, like his face, his guard wasn't up. He's he he's, he he's had his right that he had his left down when it should be up a lot of the times. He was eating, he was taking punches, and he wasn't throwing his right. That traditional, the way um, Alfred Joshua fights, proper textbook style sort of like traditional way. He wasn't throwing his right. Oh, he's got a powerful right. He should be utilizing it, and quite frankly, he didn't. And the thing that people are saying, people are having to go Eddie Hearn here because. He's obviously the, the promoter of the fight, Anthony Joshua, and he was saying before the fight, like they could have called it off. Like this fight genuinely could have been called off after cutting through Baby Miller and all these other people. They could have called it off, but Eddie Hearn said, "This is actually a actual quote from Eddie Hearn. I've got it here." He said, "I think this is more simple than people are trying to analyze." Eddie Hearn explained, and I think that's that's the sort of money making mentality that's not very good for the sport because it's just saying he just wants to get his money he just wants the fight to happen i can understand why you put so much preparation into a fight the venue sold out the tickets everyone's there all the undercards are, are sorted and to pull out of this one fight just before the fight it, it business wise it doesn't make sense but like moral wise i can see he should he should be like he should be talking or swaying more to the side of Anthony joshua's thing if he really did care about him and because to be fair against it, i think it was uh, Paul Vectin and also um, Paul Vectin and Takam, they're two fighters as well, they were smaller as well, so he had dealt with them two people before that are like sort of bigger and, and smaller, and Dillian White even. But even with uh, Takam and Paul Vectin, they were both fighters that 
Kunae, like he was confident. He was he he felt a bit off then, but he was confident and he came through. He done his job and. This time just wasn't his time, and like you said, he's gonna come back. Every fight will come back. Uh, Muhammad Ali, for fuck's sake, even uh, got knocked out, and he had his recovery. He came back as well, and I think. Sorry, I think I mean Joshua as well. He's like he's a decent guy. Like beside the boxing, as like a life, as a human being, he's a nice guy. He's a decent person, but it's just like, I mean, he wasn't. People saying he wasn't humble. He was. I think he was humble in the ring because he was saying, "Let Andy Ruse have his moment. I don't want. I don't really want to talk." Um, but yeah, obviously he did take the mic. Uh, yeah, he did take the mic of of like of his speech essentially. But just to say like well done to him, he was congratulating him. Um, but like he he in the fight there wasn't something right about him. And a lot of you must notice his boxing heads fans especially like he didn't look bothered before the fight. When you go in the ring, you're meant to be pumped. You're meant to be like doing all that like uh, shadow boxing and whatnot. You're meant to be like like he normally looks confident. He normally looks happy maybe sometimes because he's confident. But he just looked lost, man. Like, and I think after a few shots rattled him, it made him even more lost. And he, it's like he, he he wasn't bothered at all. And it's it was such a shame to see as a boxing fan. I'm sure most people around the world were shocked at this result. I was I always watch Anthony Joshua's fights and a lot of fights nowadays. I thought this could be easy for him. I thought okay, maybe a Mexican guy home of boxing. He could be the traditional Mexican fights like the the tough. Like, but it'll, it'll, it'll get over this. He'll overcome it because he's strong. He's ambitious. He's a lion in the ring. He's like no one can take away the credibility of him being not just a good fighter, but an amazing, like almost legendary fighter. The way he fights, I mean, Joshua is spectacular. And it's like for the people that aren't boxing fans, and that like, for, frankly, you're not boxing fans. If you say, "Oh, he's gone now. He's finished," like he's that's not what happens. It's like in football. If you're a keeper and you let in so many goals, uh, concede goals, or don't have a clean sheet one game, doesn't mean it's over for you. You have got plenty more matches. You have got plenty more fights to go. And I think that's very important as well. Um, I also think as well that this guy that knocked him out, I don't. He was probably thinking, uh, wait, hey, here we go. The European champion Caballero. He was pro like Anthony Joshua was probably thinking, if I got knocked by, out by him, he probably thinks he's a more of a bum than the guy's fighting. So I can't physically do this. And obviously, people get these type of things like emotional stress, like anxiety for the fight. In to be honest, Anthony Joshua said in his recent video, it's not like him to do that, but it, it, things happen. I mean, it's his first actual loss. Uh, and like his second, well obviously he had more He had more than two knockdowns. He had four knockdowns in the whole fight. But his second knockdown was in this fight. His whole career, he got knocked down by uh, Klitschko, Vladimir Klitschko, in 20, I want to say 26. 16 or 17, I'm not sure. I need to do my research, but yeah, and I think that startled him. And, but one thing you can't take the people saying, Oh, he's got a glass jaw, he does not have a glass jaw, and I'll tell you why. He got rattled, his feet were blah bobbly, but he got up four times. Who else does that? I mean, I know, like, um, what's his name, Tyson Fury did, but Ty that's why Tyson Fury is a warrior as well. But Avi Joshua got up four times, and even after the fourth time, like, even though he didn't seem there, he was still like, Okay, we're gonna go, and then obviously the ref. Like, rightly so, because of just health and safety. Called the fight off. But it was absolutely just shocking from everyone. Like, but I think... I mean, he even said he's not going to change his team. Nothing to his team. It was just to do with his mental state. And the fact that he didn't come out with the excuses is good. Obviously, they, they signed the clause contract, which means... Have a rematch clause. They have a rematch. Yes, yeah, so they signed a rematch clause. Okay, so they have a rematch in September. And I'm looking forward to that. I think he should come back from this, but I mean, after that, we we don't know what's going to happen now. Like, obviously, first fight just uh, just happened. I think it was twenty to one that Anthony Joshua, Joshua was going to win. Twenty to one. So people who put money on that are making hella hella bags, hella paper off that. But the chances now, obviously, they're leveled. He's the new unified heavyweight champion of the world, Andy Ruse. Like, it's unbelievable. But also, I think. I don't think this has happened to Joshua, but more just with Andy Ruiz, the fact that obviously fighters can lose hunger. And that guy was, like, um, and people will make jokes, but he was hungry. Like, not in a, like, of, oh, he's big. Like, he was hungry for success. He was hungry for that W in that fight and to knock Anthony Joshua out. He said what he was going to do. He didn't knock him out clean. It was a technical knockout. That's the thing. If it was a pure knockout, then I'd, I'd have to say goodbye to Joshua. <laughs> nah, joking. But it was TKO. He had, they both fought amazing fight, like, if you if people are watched highlights, they'll probably just see when the four times Anthony Joshua got knocked down for oh, he's so he's whack, he's trash. But 
in all fairness, if you watch the whole fight like I did, way through, and I watched it at least three times now, just to analyse it, there's so many points where Anthony Joshua hit a lot of good shots. Obviously, round three, I believe, he knocked him down, but obviously, he got back up, but Andy Ruse, man, like, <laughs> can we get, can we get a, a, a GG in the chat for Andy Ruse, because... He's a warrior, like he is a soldier. He was eating every punch every Joshua threw, he was just facing it, facing it, and going in. And that's the type of fight he is in that in that Mike Tyson style. And to be fair, for his weight, he had he did he had decent speed for his weight. Like his speed of throwing a jab and it's like his right hooks and stuff, they were good for being small, but he could get inside. Like he was leading the whole fight. He was the one uh, in front and Anthony Joshua most of the fight was the one like he was trying to walk around the ring, but uh, there was a huge, and also I do respect that Anthony, uh, Andy Ruse is is a nice guy. Like I watched the interviews, it could be a camera persona, but he seems genuine. He seemed like he gave Joshua the credibility. Uh, I think this is going to be an amazing fight uh, leading up to September. Um, yeah, I just hope Anthony Joshua all the best. I really do want Anthony Joshua to succeed. As much as everyone loves an underdog story, people also do love a redemption story. So, I mean, Tyson Fury had it. He was overweight. Hella overweight. Then he drew, obviously, drew, drew with Fury, but... I'm sorry, no, uh, Wilder, but... That's another thing as well people are saying, just to get on this topic of... The whole Anthony Dodger, uh, Anthony, Anthony Dodger, Anthony Joshua is dodging Wilder. I mean, he pretty much has to fight Wilder now, I think, or Fury eventually, or Mayweather. I'm not joking. I'm not sure, probably not. No, but he like people saying he's dodging him. He said many times on camera and off, off camera, let's sit down, forget all the promoters in the way, forget the contractors, sit down with me now, and let's get this contract signed. Let's get something sorted out. And it's. It is stupid how they have to sort out a contract and like in back in the day it would be as simple as anyone I wanted to fight anyone um, whether, it, whether, it, whether it was Nazim Muhammad uh, or whether it was Mike Tyson, whether it was Muhammad Ali Anyone, Rocky Marciano, they would be like, okay, I'm, I'm at top, I want to fight you Or if, if you're like an underdog, you'd be like, I want to fight the best to prove myself And that doesn't, I would admit, it doesn't happen that much these days and obviously like yeah, boxing is, uh, people say it's ruined. I, I think it, it can still get re, like, regenerated back to life. Um, but yeah, like the last few days, I, I'm still, it's still trying to sink in now that he's been knocked out in like a fight that he should he should have won. But then if you look at the fight, you've you got to give credit to Andy Roos. Like what? Absolutely perfection. The way he fought, uh, the way he, he was confident as well. He said exactly what he would do and he'd done it as well which is quite spectacular to be honest. Another thing people are skeptical about, hang on, Woo! is the Drake curse. Yes, we're going down the route of that. I know it's meant to be more of a serious video on the thing, but let's add a bit of banter, some memes in there. The Drake curse, everybody that Drake takes a picture with or meets, they get cursed, they lose, whether it's a basketball player, a boss NBA team, whether it's a soccer team, football team, anyone, any rappers, any boxers, they all fight MMA fighters, they lose. It's happened so many occasions. Even KSI tweeted out saying, I'm not I'm there taking a fight with Drake. And to be honest, if I was in that position, I don't think I would want to take a picture of you, Drake, as much as I love you. Like, it's, it, it's, it's like, it's probably started off as a coincidence. Oh, look, he took a picture of me, and then uh, something funny happens. But it's starting to happen more and more frequently. So, and then fun, another funny thing is as well, off topic, off, off the topic of boxing and onto like YouTube sort of thing, because this is primarily on YouTube that I do. Jake Paul had recently, was, was with Drake, took a picture of Drake and just chilled out of him at some sort of club or concert or something. And that, does that mean that Jake Paul's next fight, he is cursed and will lose? I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section down below. I want you guys to be commenting what types of videos I should make. Should I be doing live streams to bo for the boxing match live so I can commentate to you guys? Obviously, not show the screen because copyright reasons now. In Article 13 and all that shit. Um, but yeah, and also, if you're a YouTuber out here and you want to join me on this podcast, you want to sit down by me, uh, have some input. Like I'm going to be having guests on. If you want to be a guest in this podcast, comment down below. Hit me up on my social medias. All my social medias are just in Zingy. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm still in uh, absolute shock that Anthony Joshua has, has has lost, quite frankly. It's taken an L. He will recover. He will come back. Mark my words, ladies and gentlemen. Anthony Joshua is coming back. Do not sleep in him. Do not sleep in him. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. I might be putting this, by the way, on 
uh, Spotify and iTunes. If I can, I'm going to try and work my way around it and speak to some people. Um, hit the notification bell and it will actually tell you and notify you each time I upload, which is it's quite, it's quite handy, it's quite cool, you know, cool with the kids, with the hip. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying, I'm waffling now. Thank you guys so much for watching the Underground Podcast, episode three or four, I don't know, I'll make the title. And see you guys in a bit.